Chapter 2 Einsof, the dialectic of the infinite Isaac Luria, whose ideas are reported to us in the writings of his disciples, was once asked why it was that he himself never recorded his te teachings in writing. It is impossible, he said, to have replied, because all things are related. I can hardly open my mouth to speak without feeling, as though the sea burst and its dams has had overflowed. Anyone attempting to explain the Kabbalistic deity, particularly as it is understood by the Lyrianists, cannot help but identify with Lyria's own reluctance, for the Kabbalists' God embodies a vast area, array of aspects, each of which, e.g., Einsof, the infinite, Tzimtzum, divine concealment, contraction, Ha Alamot, words, Sitra Achra, the other side, etc are comprehensible only in reference to the others. Further, the God of the Kabbalah only achieves his identity through a dialectic evolution, part of which involves his, co his comprehension and completion by mankind. A full understanding of this God requires, in effect, a thorough knowledge of and participation in each of the Kabbalistic symbols, as well as a commitment to the very restorative acts, tikkunim, through which humanity is said to complete both God and creation. This chapter with, which paints a portrait of the Kabbalistic deity in broad strokes must ultimately be placed within a, the context of a fuller knowledge of each of the major Kabbalistic symbols, which will be presented in subsequent chapters. Here, however, I will focus on some detail upon certain more conceptual or philosophical aspects of Kabbalistic theosophy. My discussion is centered upon the Kabbalah of Luria, but will also make reference to the Zora and the earlier theosophical Kabbalists who preceded Luria, as well as to the Hasidim who are their heirs. To, who are their heirs. As we proceed with our discussion, it will become apparent that for the Kabbalists, Einsof has no static definite definable form. Instead, the deity is conceived as of as evolving through and thus embodying a number of distinct stages and aspects which with later stages opposing but at the same time encompassing earlier ones. The Kabbalist's God is both perfectly simple and infinitely complex, nothing and everything, hidden and revealed, reality and illusion, creator of man and created by man etc. As Einsof evolves, it is the progressively revealed as nothing whatsoever, in quotes, Ayin. The totality of being, the infinite will, Ratsum, thought and wisdom, the embodiment of all value and significance, the Sephirot, the wedding of, fail, of male and female, and ultimately the union of, the union of all contradictions. As, well shall, as we shall see, Einsof is both the totality of this dialectic and each of the points along the way. Einsof must be constantly redefined as by its very nature, it is a constant process of self-creation and redefinition. This self-creation is actually embodied and perf perfected in the crea creativity of humanity, of humanity, which through its practical, ethical, intellectual and spiritual activities strives to redeem and perfect an antinimous and perfect world, imperfect world. And so far as it is possible, my exposition is designed to mirror the evolution of the deity itself, for like Hegel, centuries later, the Kabbalists held that the dialectic of thought is paralleled in the dialectic of God and the world. It should be remembered, however, that the development of Einsof is not strictly an evolution in time, it has both temporal and atemporal aspects that is repeated at infinitum throughout creation. Footnote 3. According to Vital, Einsof is timeless, but its manifestations are temporal. Adam, Katmon, and the worlds were created in time. All of the worlds were created, expanded, and developed, with one coming along with after the other at different times each one later than the other, until it came to the time for this world to be created. 
Sever Ets Chaim, page 21, Menzi and Pade, The Tree of Life, page 7. Nevertheless, such metaphysical events as the symptom and the breaking of the vessels are embodied in all things and all times. This issue is provided further discussion later in this chapter in the in this section. What is dialectically involving? The hidden, a noble and ineffable God. According to Scholem, Scholem Eins of his term and the concept that originates with the early Kabbalists in Provence and Spain. It is a term that treats the adverbial relation without end in quotes. As a noun, it was tr transformed into a technical term for the infinite, completely unknowable God. Skolem re refers to a number of other terms equivalent to Eins of that appear in various Kabbalistic writings. Among these are the appellation, appellation superfluity. Hitron, a translation of the Neoplatonic Hyperosia, indistinguishable unity, or the complete indistinguishable indistinguishability of opposites. Ahadut Hashava, Hashava, Ahadut Hashava, and the essence Hamahut. The Kabbalists used a variety of negative epistemological terms to make a reference to the hidden God. The concealment of secrecy, in quotes, the concealed light, in quotes, that which thought cannot contain, in quotes, etc. Each of which signifies that his, this God is somehow beyond human knowledge and comprehension. However, there are other terms, e.g., root of all roots, in quotes, indifferent unity, in quotes, great reality, in quotes, creator, in quotes. Cause of causes in quotes and prime mover in quotes, as well as as well as the term Einsof without end in quotes, which are ontological rather than epistemological and affirmative rather than neg rather than negative, for example, signifying that God is the origin of the world, the reality of the world, or the totality of our, all things. Yet in spite of the positive connotations, even those Kabbalists who utilized such terms held that they referred to a God who was completely unknowable and concealed. Footnote 8. For example, Cordovero, who has many positive things to say about the nature of Ainsov, says that it is improper to investigate the hidden force which created all that exists. Interestingly, Cordovero follows this by stating that it is the essence of Einsof that his will and wisdom and understanding are one in quotes. Moses Cordovero or Neyerav Robinson, Moses Cordovero's instruction to Kabbalah, page 125. Of this God, the proto-Kabbalistic work refer Yetzira, as had earlier said, Restrain your mouth from speaking and your heart from thinking, and if your heart runs, let it return to its place. According to the Kabbalist R. Azrael of Genora, early 13th century, it is Einsof, Einsof's very infinitude that makes it incomprehensible. Einsof cannot be an object of thought, let alone of speech, even though there is an indication of it in everything, for there is nothing beyond it. Consequently, there is no letter, no name, no writing, no word that can comprise it. God is, God is a noble, according to Azrael, precisely because he is without end, and hence there is no outside point of view from which he can be circumscribed and made into an object. There is something inherently paradoxical in the Kabbalists' most fundamental axiom of theology. That God in and of himself is completely hidden and unknowable to man. All the Kabbalists all, as, all seem to agree on this axiom. Many of them present a theosophy that purports to set forth the inner nature of the Godhead. There is this a dialectical tension and Kabbalistic thought between God's hiddenness and ineffability on the one hand and his nobility appearance at the revelation on the other. 
footnote 11 on the dialectic between Einsoff's ineffability and knowability. See Stephen T. Katz, Utterance and Ineffability in Jewish, Jewish Neoplatonism. Jewish Neoplatonism and Neoplatonism in Jewish thought, editor Len E. Goodman. According to Katz, the Kabbalistic thesis that one and Sephirot are emanations of within the Godhead, and two, the Sephir, Sephirot are clearly known to man in their manifestation on earth, yields the conclusion that by knowing and naming this, the, the Sephirot, know and name. In Sof, obliquely but authentically, page 291. In fact, Kabbalistic theosophy makes this very assumption. While the Kabbalists marshal biblical proof texts in support of the unfathomability of Ein Sof, e.g., Psalms, his greatness can never be fathomed, Isaiah, there is no searching for his understanding. Nearly all agree that the personal creator God of the Bible, the God who is revealed to humanity, is at least one step removed from the unknowable Einsof. Einsof, according to the majority of Kabbalists, as a real is a, an exception, is an impersonal that in quotes, rather than a personal Tao in quotes or who in quotes. According to the Kabbalists, Einsof serves as the ontological and metaphysical ground for the revealed God, but Einsof does not itself appear anywhere in the Bible. According to one anonymous, anonymous Kabbalist, Einsof is not even alluded to in the Torah or in the prophets or in the hagiographers or in the words or in the words of the sages. Only the mystics received a small indication of it. According to Isaac the, Isaac the, bl the Blind, Einsof, in contrast to the biblical God to whom the may direct or praise or end or prayers, is not even conceivable by thinking. In, quotes. in contrast to the biblical God, it is impossible to attribute to Einsof a bill, the desire, thought, speech, deed, or intentions, for to do so would imply its limitation, inasmuch as it would be said to have. To have willed or spoken one thing and not another. According to the Sohar, there are no ends, no wills, no lights, no luminaries in Einsof. For to say anything at all about Einsof, to posit any differentiation within it, as Tishbi has put it, blemishes its unparalleled and unknowable perfection. In Tukune Sohar, we read, Quotes, high above all heights and hidden beyond all concealments, no doubt can grasp you at all. You have no known name for you, fill all names, and you are the perfection of them all. End quotes. The Lyrianic Kabbalists affirm the total inability of Einsof. Vital informs us that this term indicates that there is no absolutely, there is absolutely no way to comprehend him, either by thought or by contemplation, because he is incomplete, because he is completely in inconceivable and far removed from any kind of thought. The first, the Bafitscher Rebbe, Schneur Zalman of Liadi, makes it clear that the unknowability of Einsof is not a fiction of the depth or difficulty of the concepts involved, begin quotes, but it is not at all proper to say concerning the Holy One, blessed be he, who transcends intellect and wisdom, that it is impossible to apprehend him because of the depth of the concept, for he is not within the realm of comprehension at all." End quotes. According to Schnur Zalman, to say that one cannot comprehend Einsof is akin to saying that one cannot literally touch an idea, the can quotes, for the sense of thought refers for the sense of touch refers and applies only to physical objects which may be grasped by the hands." End quotes. Einsoff's wisdom is an order above thought, just as our thought is an order above the matter we apply it to. And just as inert matter cannot grasp our thoughts, we cannot fathom Einsoff's wisdom. 
we shall see that the Kabbalists paradoxically have much to say even about that which they regard as unsayable. Yet there is a strong tendency in the Kabbalah to, to, to simply define Ein Sof as the unknowable in quotes and to hold that anything of which an attribution of state, a statement can be made is by definition a lower manifestation of the Godhead. On some views, in fact, the term Ein Sof is said to refer to Keter, the divine will, to Keter, the divine will, with no term being applicable to the divine essence. The Zohar speaks of the supernal will, the secret of all secrets, and the primal nothing, but it denies that even these exalted ascriptions apply to Ein Sof itself, instead attributing to them uh, instead attribu attributing them to the highest sephira or emanation. In its purest form, we might simply speak of Ein Sof as the realm of the silent, that which can perhaps be referred to but not described. Like the German romantic philosopher Friedrich Schlegel, the Kabbalists held that one cannot speak about the absolute or the totality in, a, in the way one speaks about particular things and their relations to other finite entities. The totality can be referred to, but itself, it cannot itself be described, for to do so would be to contrast it with other things and thereby limit it and rob it of its infinite character. Character, But in another way, Einstein can be referred to, but it has no, it has no significance or meaning. Indeed, for Einsoff to have significance, there would have to be something outside or beyond it for it to be contrasted with or have significance for. Again, again, if this were the case, Einsoff would lose its very character or the, as the infinite totality. I believe that Kershom Sholem expressed a similar line of thought when he says totalities cannot be communicated only in occult fashion. The name of God can be pronounced but cannot be expressed, for, all, for only that which is fragmentary makes language expressible. For, end quotes. We, have, we will have occasion to pursue the significance of referring to Einsoff, end quotes, la later in this chapter.